ladies, so I'm back and I'm ready to do a glamorous makeup look. This is pulling out all the stops. I am not doing a two-step or a natural make. I want to do makeup. I want to feel like I'm going somewhere. It has been way too long of not putting on a glamorous look. And today I'm going, I'm wearing jeans and I'm going to put on my sequin jacket because I want to feel like this is what I do at home, okay? I figure out how I want to feel and then I dress accordingly and I put my makeup on. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter what, like that I'm staying home, but I want to feel a certain way and that's how I do it. I feel a certain way through fashion and makeup. I just had my hair blown out. So yes, you will see a little bit of frizz because of my beautiful unruly gray hair wanting to speak loud and tell you that it's here and also I have a hair light on so of course you're seeing it so I didn't want to spray it all down I wanted it to be free and I embrace my frizzies I embrace them I this doesn't bother me I know it bothers a lot of people on my channel that say oh your hair is so frizzy and gray hair is so like unruly and whatever I did not take a flat iron to pieces of it I just said you know what it's going, it just, I, you know what? I embrace it, I allow it. I don't have to mat everything down. I don't have to say, oh no, it's not perfect. Hence why I'm growing my hair out, right? I don't feel like I need to be in this bob box right now. I wanna be free. I wanna, I wanna just l go with the flow and I am concentrating on that. So today I'm gonna be using my Nick at Night palette. You're gonna be so excited because it's a very underrated palette. I've done a makeup tutorial before with this, but this is a chocolate matte palette, except for you have a really beautiful light sheen on this eyeshadow here. So you have a lot of range. This is such a beautiful palette. And it's not, you know, I, I think I mentioned this in my last video when I used Nick at night is to not be afraid when you look at it. Oh my gosh, it's so dark. I would never do that. Experiment with your makeup experiment now that you're home and you're able to do that you have the time now if that is too dark for you and you're like no i just won't do something so dark you can go into a matte palette this is completely matte it's called strong brew i created it for women that are strong that want to take control of their makeup want to take control of their beauty they're taking control of their hair whether they still dye it whether they cut it whether they let it go gray strong women a nice universal matte palette that is in the cocoa, beautiful coffee colors, okay? So today I just really felt like bringing it with my Nick at night. I felt like being bold. I felt like being, you know what? Yes, 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 I wanna do this. I wanna, I wanna feel glamorous. I wanna put lashes on. I'm doing different lashes that I normally do. Um, Ardell 421s, not the 420s. I know, get excited. So I'm going to be using new product too to prime my skin. Ever came out with a quench. This is a really nice advanced hydrating booster. This is gonna help really hydrate the skin without slip and slide, without feeling greasy. Now, if you do have more oily prone skin in the T-zone this summer and you're just having a really hard time maintaining that nice matte look to the skin, Shine Shield Oil Control Mattifying Gel is really nice T-zone prior to your foundation. So today I'll use the quench and I'm gonna use my favorite Ever Canvas, which is a primer SPF 30 mineral. All right, so we're going to do that first. I'm gonna just add the quench. I usually do uh, like two pumps, one and a half, two. And I will put it on my skin and it's just like soaking into my skin. It's so beautiful. It really feels nice. Hydration. I feel like nothing's gonna slip off my skin when I put this on. I know you know what that feels like. You put on some uh, some kind of hydrator or moisturizer and then your foundation starts falling off of it or it doesn't go on smoothly. You won't get that issue with this product. It soaks right into the skin, feels really, really good, especially now when our skin is feeling more dehydrated in summer. It might be, even if you are oily, you want to quench the skin. You want to create that hydration and help your skin be more balanced. So I'm gonna go, just give it a second, and I'm gonna go into putting the primer on. I just like to dab this on in my four areas of my face, and then I will just spread it out. So just so I don't have too much, but this is nice because it's clean beauty. I don't have any glycols, parabens, phthalates. I have a mineral SPF. 
It's really nice, it gives a little bit of sheen to the skin, which I like, it gives my skin that kind of healthy, nice radiance to it. And then when I have the product on my back of my hand, I always like to, you can bring this all down, but you know what, I'm not doing that right now because same thing with my foundation. I, I would bring it down on my neck, whatever, but I have this jacket on and I'm, I'm not gonna get all crazy with trying to work it all in with my silk blouse on. <laughs> Knowing me, I'll get something on it. So basically I'll just take this and I always want hand protection. I don't want, <laughs> I don't want any uh, pigmentation being able to really advance my age on my hands. First and foremost, my first step is going to be taking my eye and lip primer. This is the first step I do in every single makeup tutorial because I want to prime my eyes. I don't want to do beautiful foundation, powder, everything, and then um, do my eyes and have all my eyeshadow, especially with the darker palette, go everywhere. I'm not someone that put loads up powder first and then whisks away. I think that's that's just the wrong thing to do. I don't want powder on my face like that. So I first start with my eyes. I want to prime the lids. I want this to be nice. You can see I have pigmentation on my eyes. So I'm gonna just take the eye and lip primer. You can use this on your lips too. If you have pigmented lips, you're going into maybe a red and you wanna really have a nice foundation for your lips for staying power with the lipstick. So I'm going to just go inner corner, work it in. Sometimes I come down like that just to to blend it, but I'm going to go from the base of my lashes up to my brow bone. And it, I literally, I just tap in, I tap on, and I have a beautiful, very soft finish. It's not sticky. It's not moving all around. If you put too much product on, yes, you're gonna have a problem with anything. This is what I do. So you can see, I have a really beautiful primed eyelid ready for shadow. It's going to come out true. It's going to look beautiful. It's not going to compete with my own skin color. And then this one's not primed. So I have a little bit of redness in here, darkness, and it's just skin color. I want it to be light. So we're going to prime this eye now. So now my eyes are primed. We're ready to go into my Nick at Night. I love this palette. I love that it is kind of risky in a way, right? I know that everyone looks at this and says, oh, I couldn't do it, I couldn't do it. Well, guess what? I'm here to prove you wrong because you can do it. It is all about your application technique. Do you have a heavy hand? Do you put on a lot of eyeshadow and then say, oh no, it's too much? If you do, just reverse it. Try to learn new ways to apply eyeshadow, right? So I'm using my, my uh, essential uh, brush kit. I made this for you. I say it in every video because it's been very important to me. Remember, I see women come into my studio for the last 13 years now with rolls of brushes, big brushes, dirty brushes, small brushes, brushes that just don't work for them. And I was like, I have to make a solution. I have to make something that's affordable that you get the, just the right brushes, 100% vegan. I, I really took a long time creating them, picking out the ferrule, which is basically what holds the brush in place, this metal piece, the color. I wanted this to be a easy travel. I was traveling to HSN all the time. I had no idea where my makeup brushes were. It was very frustrating for me. So I love the travel aspect of it. That was a very big point for me. And also I wanted to be able to keep it on the, the hotel vanity. I didn't want my brushes laying around. I didn't want to have to take out the my normal thing is, I, if you've seen my Instagram stories, I take out their uh, washcloth and I lay everything out, like my eye drops and everything is like laid out so my brushes would be you know, perfectly like clean and forget it. It sits on here, it's perfect. I can put my mascara in here, I can put my lip liners, I know where everything is. So I made my life a lot easier. And so I use the Essential Makeup Brush Kit to keep it simple and easy. So I'm taking the eyeshadow brush and I'm going to go on the lid. Now, this is what I really like to do. I like to have the concentration of the color more at the base, and then it lightens up when it gets into the crease, right? So my objective is not to put on this beautiful dark chocolate matte eyeshadow, heavy, heavy, heavy on the whole lid. I'm not just mindlessly going into it and putting it on the brush and then going and just going everywhere. 
That's not what I'm doing. I'm intentionally putting on the shadow, and I think that's very important to remember. Also, I've mentioned too in my videos that the way you load up the brush is that you want to tap into it like this, right? Load the brush up on one side. You don't need it on both sides. Just one side, you're loading it up. My shadows are very highly pigmented, so you have to be careful. You don't wanna swirl them all around and you're gonna have too much on the brush. So I have just enough on the brush, right? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go right to the base and I'm going to press it into my eye. I want to, this is where I want the color to be. I wanna have that control where I'm not like, oh no, I went out too far, oh no, too heavy, I gotta start over. Because yes, if you do add too much eyeshadow, especially with a darker color, you could fuse it out. But if you're going for a specific look, you're gonna have to start over. And I like just placing this in the center. So it's almost like I'm going to have the concentration here and then I can work with it. I can, I can say, okay, let me take off some more color on my brush so there's nothing on it and then I can taper it down. I can, I can really work and, and slowly build with this color. So I'll take off anything that's on this brush right now and I'll just take it down. What's really nice about my shadows though is that they are triple milled, so they're very silky. They're easy to blend. They're easy, you can see how it's on. Beautiful concentration of the color. Now you have a nice tapering. It's moving with you. It's not blotchy. It's not, not moving. So I can just really figure out how deep I wanna go today, how intense I wanna go, and you can see it's just very pretty. So look at this palette. Do you see this palette? You can look at this and say, I am so scared right now to try this palette, if you can see it. I might put up another picture just so you can see it up close and personal, but you would take a look at this and say, no way, Nicole, there's no way that I would use that nice dark chocolate brown, like an espresso brown, and then look at it on my, look at it on my lid. I look at this beautiful wash of color, right? I mean, this isn't scary. This isn't like, whoa, it's over the top. I can keep adding. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load up my brush again, just with a little bit of the same color, and I'm going to just intensify it. So I'm gonna just add a little bit more in the center, the base of my lash. So you can see now that I'm building up the color. So you can see that really just looks beautiful. So this is like two layers, right? And then I'm gonna take off what's on my brush. And then I'm going to just now bring it up into the brow bone area here, my contour. And I'm just going to really get this to look just washed out up at the top. So I have a little bit of this color diffused, bring it down, not so much in this corner. I'm gonna make that lighter. So I'm gonna use the lighter kind of the sheen color to that, but I'm going to just use this and just keep diffusing this color into my contour area here, right underneath my brow bone. We're gonna do the same thing on the other eye. So I'm done with this color on this eye also. So I have one color on my eye. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take the lightest color, the sheen, and I'm gonna take my little contour brush, it's like a pencil, it's a little bit at the, at the uh, pointed design. And I'm gonna just go in to this area because I want to have this lighter, right? I want this to be nice and light in this corner. Just gonna bring some lightness. It's going to just highlight this area here. It's nice that this brush is pointed so you kind of get right in to this area, lightening it up. Now, I can take the same brush, use the lighter color, and just give a little bit of sheen underneath the brow. Not doing too much, just a little bit of highlight underneath, bringing it all together. And then we're gonna take my smudge brush, which I love, this is like my little eraser, it's dense, little short brushes. I'm gonna go into the darkest color here, and this is really pigmented, so you want to be able to 
really create that beautiful, beautiful eye. You wanna define your eyes with this. So I'm basically just rolling it around the whole tip because it's short and it's a smudgier brush. So I wanna make sure that there's enough color on this brush. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little, I'm gonna just sweep it across the lash line because I wanna build up this intensity on the lash line. And I wanna concentrate on the outer part of my eye. I'm gonna come underneath here too, right? Right here, I don't wanna go, I don't wanna go all the way to really heavy and, and close in the eye. I really want to just give it this definition on the outside here and then up on the lash line so it really looks like I have more makeup on than I do. Now, I'm gonna just take a little bit more of that dark, beautiful color, and I'm gonna go in and the very, very end here, like I normally do that little V, but I just wanna get a little bit of density here on the end of the eye. I want that real beautiful concentrated color. It's really about the lash line and coming up just a little bit. Now remember, if you can see, I'm not going all in here. I'll show you with this, the, the the contour brush. I'm not going all in here and giving it this heavy, heavy look. I don't wanna do that. I just want it to be in this corner. So I'm really giving the eye that sexiness, that, you know, that little bit of extra, but I'm not looking like I have tons of makeup on, but I'm dark. I'm still dark and smoky and sexy, but I'm not like, oh my gosh, so much, so much eyeshadow on. It just looks so heavy. It looks so, it's almost like an updated smoky eye because I'm using browns and I'm just, I'm just placing the product right where it needs to be to create this more, you know, elegant, sexy, smoky eye. Does that make sense? I just think that it looks really pretty when you when you're when you're placing the darkness right where you need to place it to create that look i'm going to do some liner so it'll just intensify it a little bit but i just think that just it just looks really pretty so this doesn't look complete it looks nice it looks like it's you know has this beautiful wash of color but this if you can see really gives you that extra but it's not over the top. It's not looking like, whoa, you just put on so much makeup. Whoa, why did you put on so much heaviness on the eye? It ages you. No, what we're doing is, is what we're strategically placing the darkness. We're diffusing it. This is the best brush. I was just talking to someone on Zoom about it. And I said, do you have a short brush that basically can move your product, move your eyeliner? That was it. She said that with her glasses on, she can't really apply eyeliner. I said, that's fine. Do you have a brush like this? Because when you apply eyeliner and say it's not even and it's all over the place on the, on the lid, that's okay, ladies, because you can take your smudge brush and you can smooth it out. So basically you're just giving that dimension to the eye, the lines everywhere, but it won't be because you're taking and smoothing out your eyeliner. That's a really important aspect because so many of us can't see. We have contacts on, we have to be up close, we have glasses, we can't apply eyeshadow or eyeliner without the glasses. This is why it's important to have a brush like this that you can just drag across and it smooths everything out and it looks beautiful. So we're gonna move on to the other eye. So don't worry if you have any shadows that have fallen down. I take my little Alme pad, which is just my oil-free makeup remover pad, and I wrap it around my finger and I just go up like this. So if there's anything that has come out of this line, it's easily cleaned up. And I don't have any concealer on yet. I don't have any foundation, BB cream, CC cream, whatever I am using. So it's a really nice trick. That's a really beautiful trick to really have crisp, beautiful lines on your eye without disrupting foundation or concealer, etc. So let's go into, I'm doing dark brown. This is my ultimate brow and eye cream liner. 
has a little brush at the end, right? So it's already in here for you, angled brush. Remember, if you have this brush and you're using it, you want to use a makeup pad remover or an alcohol pad to remove the product off of it after you used it so it's clean when you put it back into your product. All right, so I'm going to now just give a little extra for a liner. I really want to define my eyes. And so I'm gonna take a little bit of this. I always, when I'm using cream, liners so you're going to pick up more product than you really need but you're going to use it again off of your hand so i want to make sure it's not too much on the brush before i go right to place it on my eye so again same rules will apply of my eyeliner technique whether you're using a brow pencil like the brow coal creamy pencil this is an option if you don't want to use a cream liner if it's easier for you the brown is beautiful so that is um, an option. So here I go. Um, I will just take the, the brush and I'm going to, I always kind of start in the middle. So I start in the middle and I just drag this right on my lash line. All right, I'm not making, you can make it as, as thick as you want, but my technique is all about thickening up the lash line. And this is so smooth, it's very easy to apply because the product almost does the work for you. You have a little bit of time before it dries. This is a 24 hour stay. So this is wonderful if you don't have brows on the lateral part and you want them to stay, especially during summer with swimming and what have you, sweating, gardening. So I just place this on my lash line, right? Then this is what's, what, what I really love about this product is that I can take my little smudge brush, my little racer guy, and I want it to be just again in that smoky feel. So I can just drag this across and it won't be as definitive, right? It'll be a little bit softer and it'll just really look like my lashes have a really nice thickness to them. So I think that it's just, it's such a, it's such a beautiful product. It's really, really wonderful to work with. And I'll take a little bit of it down on just the outer part of my eye, and then we'll do the other. So I'm just gonna pick up the product that was on my hand so I have enough, which is perfect. You don't need that much of this product. It is really, really wonderful because you're gonna be able to use it for a long time. Just make sure that top is tight on the product. So I'm just doing little strokes, if you can see. Little strokes nothing major i'm not trying to take it from one corner and go all the way there I, I could never do that so i just take little strokes working down want it super super tapered into the eye i don't want to make it really thick and then for instance like let me make this uh, i'll make this line not so even like right here it's not even it's kind of like just kind of dips down does not matter because i'm going to use my brush and I'm going to smudge it all together so it looks perfect. It's almost like cheating with this little brush because you don't have to be perfect. And then you just diffuse it all together and it looks like you are a master at your eyeshadow or your eyeliner because it all just flows so nicely together. Now you might be saying, well, wait a second, that's weird because in your last video, you're gonna do your eyeliner and then you're gonna curl your eyelashes. Yes, I actually am because this product the cream brow and eye liner is a stay put, so it's not gonna move, it won't budge. So basically it is waterproof, <laughs> it stays there, it's fade proof, it's so great. So I don't have to worry, so this is the only product that I don't have to worry about. So when I, when I curl my lashes and I'm at the base, it doesn't move the product. So it, that's a bonus for this product. So I'm using my Shuamora eyelash curler, you know, I go to the base, I pump it, I wanna see my lashes beautiful and really up not straight i'm going to take my mascara this is my intense mascara and it has beautiful teeth on the this brush and it's very thin so i'm really able to get to the base and pull up to the tips and get enough mascara on my lashes to really make a difference and i am going to put on my lashes over this a lot of people ask me, oh, you do mascara first and then you put your false lashes on? Yes, I do. Because I want, I don't put 
mascara on synthetic lashes. I don't think that looks natural. I want my lashes to fuse in, be the best that they can be, and then fuse in with the false eyelashes. That's how I've always done it. I think it looks the best. I don't feel like you can get to the base of your lashes when you have lashes on, when you have false lashes on and you're trying to, you know, marry the two, you get clumpy looking lashes in my opinion. And I don't, I don't like that. Before I do the lashes, I'm going to go in with my clear brow fix. I am obsessed with this product. First of all, when I see those little gray hairs coming out, I will switch to the brown or the brunette. And when I don't see that little guy, he must have fallen out. I'll use the clear. I just want my brows to stay up. I want them to be somewhat manageable, right? So I'll just brush them up. It's really, it's nice. It's like a little hairspray, but it's not crispy and, and crunchy like hairspray. It's just a nice gel. I'm just putting on a little eye duo. This is a in the dark color. I just put it on the spine of the lashes. Nice and nice and thin. You don't need a lot. Um, and I, you know what? I really go for the feeling of, I don't really, you know, I, sometimes I can't see that well. Um, whether I'm wearing contacts or if I'm not. So I go for the feeling of where it is on my lash. I go to the base. I just try to go right to the, just on top of my lashes. And then I pull down the sides. So I make sure, so I literally place it right where I think it should be. And then make sure that I pull down the side. So it's not a big deal. I'm not moving them all around. I literally go in to the, I'm placing it right in the middle. I'm matching it up to the, my actual eye. The middle part is what is most important to me. And then I just pull down the ends. So they're anchored. So that's basically, but these are a little bit more dramatic. I love them. I'm gonna do the other eye. So now that the lashes are on, we can work on our skin. So I'm gonna just, Quickly do a little no redness in my areas of redness, which you know where they are. I just take it from the tube and I'm gonna take a little bit of no dark spots today. I see some extra dark spots <laughs> coming up. I don't know why, why are you coming here? I don't want you here. So I'm just going to neutralize out my skin first, N get a nice even canvas. I'm gonna just take this just right below my under eye because that is where my redness is. And then I'm gonna go in with a little concealer. I use the Cool Concealer. There's two you can choose from, cool and also warm. So this is what the warm looks like. You can tell this is too deep for my skin. This is the cool. So I'm gonna be, I love that I have a darker color in here so I can actually mix and match for a perfect concealing uh, opportunity when I need it. So I'm going to just make my custom color and I'm going to go right into the corner underneath the eye. Again, I don't drag the product. I like to kind of stipple it on here, bring it down over my no redness. I want to really lighten up this area underneath my eye. And this is how I do it. Now that my face looks all patchwork, right? I'm gonna take my beauty blender. This is damp. I'm going to just blend it all in underneath my eyes. Just blend this in. So I'm not rubbing it. I'm just placing it into the skin. So I have a nice workable canvas before I put on my BB cream. Using BB cream and light, I just need like a pump and a half. And I'm going to use my foundation brush and I'm going to brush this on working it over the area so everything goes together. It looks beautiful and it's seamless. So yes, I do bring it up over what I just did because I want it to all look really, really seamless and beautiful.
Now BB cream is on. I'm gonna just take a little bit of my Nikita banana. This is gonna be a nice color correcting powder that's just gonna set my, I just like to do it in my T-zone. I, I just try to combat a little bit of that redness underneath here. I like to set anything underneath my eyes really nice. So I'm still in that color correcting mode, but it just really, really soft, silky, like satin on the skin. You can see that it just this, this BB cream, honestly, you can see like the texture is just so seamless. It's so pretty. I really, I am, I cannot wait until you get it. I, I, we're two weeks behind schedule, but it is coming in next week, which is the week of the 20th, I think of July. I'm going to take a little bit of my classic beach. I just want a little bronzer from this palette. So I'm going to just take a little bit of bronzer. I'm going to go in on my cheeks right here. And another rule of thumb, that you would, would, is a nice little tip, is that if you don't know where to put your bronzer or place your bronzer, you wanna go the tip of the ear down. See, right here is where I applied it. So this is, this is kind of like a cheat sheet for you to know where you should be putting your bronzer. So you're not too high, not too low. Again, you can do the backwards three, so you're hitting the jawline, nice contour, hitting it up a little bit here. But I do that after I have most of the, the bronzer off of my brush and I just get a little bit of nice, beautiful, you know, contouring down here. Now, I'm gonna take my Ageless palette. Remember, I told you I'm doing makeup today. I'm doing, <laughs> doing it all up. So I'm gonna just, I like to customize, which is like this. I just use the same, the same brush and I just kind of customize my blush, which is just, just pretty. It's really just a healthy, just healthy petal blush, pretty pinks, right? So this is kind of what I do. And I lightly just dust my face with it so I get a little bit of color. My favorite thing to do is lips, 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 lips. So today I'm keeping it really simple. I'm keeping it really simple. And I think that my lips are over there. And I'm gonna just go right over with this beautiful, has this beautiful sheen. It has a little bit of that silver in it. This is a really nice lip gloss to top a lot of lip uh, lipsticks with. Ah, this lip is all about glam. I mean, this is about high shine, beautiful silver sheen. Oh God, it's so nice. Listen, I can feel terrible and then I can do my makeup like this and I can feel like I'm on top of the world. I, you know, listen, <laughs> I do walk around the house with outfits like this on. I do. My husband, I know, probably thinks I'm very strange, but it makes me feel good. It makes me feel like I could do this look and I can put on a black robe, which is one of my favorite robes that I love wearing, and sit down and watch reality TV and feel beautiful. Like every time I glimpse at myself, I'm like, oh gosh, I feel, you know, not even so much normal again, but I'm doing something for myself. You know, I don't have to go anywhere. I can pretend like I'm going somewhere, but I don't have to be going anywhere to, to put on my face and to play with makeup and to feel good. I mean, this is what we used to do when we were when we were little and, and, and it was encouraged and it was supported, you know, experimenting with color and playing with different lipsticks and whatever. Now it's like, what are you doing? You're not going anywhere. You, you can't wear that. Why not? Why can't we? We can. We can do whatever we want to do. And guess what? This is what I'm doing. I'm I'm making myself feel good when you know, not all the time am I <laughs> feeling good. And I, I want, I, I'm so desperate to feel um, like myself again and, and to, and just the act of taking a brush and, and putting, you know, putting on blush and seeing the color and it's like, oh gosh, I put color to my face just before I felt like I look like, you know, I haven't slept in a week, you know, things like that, brushing my eyebrows, you know, up and it's like, oh God, yeah, that's really nice. I'm, I'm doing things for myself. I'm doing things for my sanity through makeup, through beauty, through fashion, through style. And I love doing it. I love bringing these to you. Yes, this is a lot of makeup, but that's the whole point. I wanted to play. I wanted to just kind of do steps. I wanted the ritual of steps and putting things on and, oh, let's add this and, oh, let's take this off and let's put this on. I mean, that's what I do. And that's what, that is really my therapy. So ladies, I encourage you to pull out all your makeup, get messy, get, get experimental, get, whoa, or put it, 
you know what? Sometimes I just put like too much on and then I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like so much fun. Whoa, it's, it's like too much. But that's, that's me being able to be free and not have to color in the lines and oh, I'm not going anywhere. I have to wear a mask, can't wear lipstick, can't do this, can't do that. No, it's not about that. It's about what do you want to do? You do it, you, you do whatever it makes, what, however silly it is to the outside world, it's not to you. And I encourage you to experiment, to have fun, to smile and to feel beautiful. And until my next video, I'll see you later. Some